GBR is a sophisticated way of a socket graft and the compartment technique worked quite well. Now, the same principles apply to the aesthetic zone. Okay, there's nothing different. The osteocytes, the fibroblasts, the wound healing process is exactly the same. So we don't have to invent other rules. We don't have to invent other uh, principles because it's just the same. Now, a lot more is at stake. It's the aesthetic zone. We have to now uh, be, be much more cautious. We have to be much more careful with our planning, with our strategies. But the principles are the same. And I'd like to demonstrate with this case. And this patient had a fractured tooth in the aesthetic zone, an upper left maxillary incisor, central incisor. And you can see the obvious fracture. And I know that the extraction is going to be very easy. The longer you wait, the longer the patient waits, it's not always your fault, so don't feel bad. Some patients will not let you move forward. Not always your responsibility. All, your responsibility is to educate your patient and let them know what are the ramifications, what are the negative side effects of waiting. And obviously, the longer you wait, the more bone loss, the more blowout, and the more damage, sometimes to the adjacent teeth. And we know this extraction is going to be easy because this tooth is already cracked and the tooth is going to be floating in pus. Okay, so, and the other thing that I know is there's going to be a big deficiency in the buccal plate. So yes, I would definitely pre-medicate a patient with antibiotics prior to the extraction, sometimes a day or two after. And, and it's a very simple uh, reason for that. And it's not really to prevent systemic infections or prevent um, things that you normally would think uh, antibiotics are used for. The main reason I use antibiotics preoperatively is to reduce the swelling, make the infection a little bit smaller, maybe have the body start encapsulating it so it'll be easier for me to remove it. But number two, in my experience, once the patient is on antibiotics, especially for those severe infections, there are antibiotics a day or two before, it's much easier to anesthetize them. And trust me, you want your patient to be fully anesthetized and comfortable for these procedures because if not, it's just impossible to perform. So sometimes giving them a preoperative systemic antibiotics to start a day or two before is going to help. And the dose depends on your patients and depends on if they're allergic or not and depends on the, ex the extent of the infection preoperatively. If it's a, just an infection like that, if the patient is not allergic to penicillin, I would prescribe amoxicillin 500 milligrams to be given uh, three times a day, starting two days before the extraction and to continue after probably about five, six days. So a total of eight to 10 days is quite reasonable. Now, if the infection is already has extended into the facial spaces and you have a buccal space infection, canine space. Uh, that's a different story. Then I would go with clindamycin as long as the patient is not allergic to it. And that is much more effective when it comes to facial space infection. And of course, you have to warn the patient about the side effects of clindamycin, uh, which could be a very severe stomach upset and uh, pseudomembranous colitis. So I, I always recommend probiotics, and other things that uh, can counter this off. But uh, definitely pre-medicate with more severe in infections. So when this tooth is extracted, I can uh, the extraction was very simple, but I can expect a very big blowout and a complete loss of the buccal plate. Complete loss of the buccal plate, and I know this buccal plate needs to be regenerated. So if you think about the compartment technique, and if you start counting the walls, how many walls does this extraction socket have? Maybe you want to give me an idea from what we talked about before. How many walls does this extraction socket have? And I can just give you a hint. It's less than 10. It's less than 10. I think that's obvious. And Adam says three. Adam, I kind of agree with you. I kind of agree with you. It's kind of between three and four. Why three or four? So we have a palatal plate, so that's wall one. We have mesiodistal plates. That's Thank God we have those because that will determine the future implant success. That's what's going to hold our papilla. So your interproximal implant tissue is going to depend on the presence or absence of interproximal tissue and bone. 
we have no buckle plate and we almost have no floor because it's an, a central incisor. So we know that the root uh, tapers down and it becomes very thin. So we barely have any, any floor. So we know this is a much more difficult to regenerate and we need to overgraft. So following the extraction protocol is following the extraction and following the compartment grafting technique, I would complete the buckle wall with a collagen membrane that extends beyond the defect. I would add my bone graft and I recommend you graft in excess. Don't just graft to the borders of the defect. You need to graft in excess because many times this graft is going to resorb and some of it will be encapsulated. So grafting in excess is beneficial. Now, I chose a flap design where I spared the papilla on the right central incisor because I felt that if I had removed it or reflected it, there's a chance it would not be attached. Now, in order to expose the extent of the defect, I made a decision to reflect the distal papilla because if you have to choose between the mesial or the distal papilla, I think the choice is obvious. And the mesial papilla is so much more important than the distal. Both are important, but the mesial is more critical. So I created a vertical diagonal vert releasing incision that allowed me to expose the defect. Now, if you look at the site after the grafting, you can tell that it's there's no primary closure. Okay, there is a collagen membrane on the buckle, there is bone graft in the socket, and there is a collagen plug that is the occlusal component of the, of the extraction. And the temporary was just in front of your eyes. The temporary is with a removable appliance. Make sure that you adjust it so it doesn't apply any forces on the extraction socket. And you can and cut it short and definitely remove flanges. The uh, dental laboratories are no notorious, are no notorious to create flanges. Don't ask me why, okay? Get rid of those flanges as soon as possible because they'll apply buckle pressure, they'll resorb all of your bone graft.